This is Rob Crowther. I'm at the Center for Science and Culture's Insiders Briefing 2018, and I am glad to be joined by one of our speakers at this year's briefing, Michael Flannery. Hi, Michael. Hello, Rob. Michael's a senior fellow here at the Center, and he's also the author of a new book called Nature's Prophet about Alfred Russell Wallace, who uh, some people may know his name but not know a lot about him. Why don't you tell us just a couple of the big highlights of Wallace and why people should be interested in him? Sure. Well, the subtitle of the book is uh, of Nature's Prophet is Alfred Russell Wallace's Evolution from Natural Selection to Natural Theology. And embedded within that subtitle is the thing that really put Wallace on the map. Um, he co-discovered the theory of natural selection along with Charles Darwin, uh, sent Darwin a letter in 1858 um, that basically laid out a theory of evolution based upon natural selection that when Darwin received it, um, he kind of freaked out. He says, oh my God, he says, this is, this is my... This is my theory of natural selection. What am I going to do? Because he had been working quietly on his own on a theory of, of evolution. And now felt with this letter by Wallace that he was going to, in a sense, be upstaged if he didn't really work quickly and put um, his own evolutionary theory together. And that's what really was the catalyst for the, for the publication of Origin of Species. Nonetheless, it also put Wallace on the map as a major figure in uh, British science in the 19th century, only he took a very different trajectory from Darwin, whose evolutionary theory was very materialistic, very reductionist. Uh, Neil Gillespie says that the theory is essentially philosophical positivism, which is discussed in the book. Whereas Wallace um, actually moved toward a, a pretty comprehensive natural theology, which was inherently theistic, because he came to believe in, in what I've called intelligent evolution, which is really a theory of, of evolutionary diversity based upon intentional design and, uh, and detectable purpose in nature, which is precisely what Darwin wanted to do. That is pretty fascinating. It sounds like, and you have said this, that he's, he's sort of a godfather to modern day, what we would call intelligent design. You refer to it in his view maybe as intelligent evolution. Right. Um, so how is that had an impact on today's design scientists? Well, I, I think from an ID perspective, we can all sort of recapture some of our own heritage and realize that the, 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 the history of ID, uh, much as the modern sort of permutation of it, uh, occurred in the early 90s at Pereo Dunes. Um, with a collection of key figures that we all know today, uh, Stephen Meyer being one of them, Mike Behe, uh, uh, and a great many others, um, uh, Jonathan Wells, um, that even before that Perehu Dunes meeting, I would say very much at that meeting, when they gathered together to look at sort of reconfiguring um, the science of life in terms of, of, of intentionality and purpose, and intelligent design, literally. I think very much the ghost of Wallace was at that Yeah, it sounds like it. And, and I, I, I think the, the heritage of modern evolution does not need to be placed in a corner as though Wallace, you know, as though Darwin was the only one that had an answer to how evolution took place. Wallace had a very different view, and it's a view that, as I explain in the book in the later chapters, was carried forward well into the 20th century and even to the day um, in today's um, modern ID theorists, which hold what I would call very Wallacean views 
about the nature of life and about the nature of the cosmos? Well, it sounds very interesting. It is, it's your third book on Alfred Russell Wallace. Yes. And what were the first two? Well, the first book is a, an abridged edition of The World of Life, and it's how Alfred Russell Wallace's World of Life challenged Darwinism. And it's a, a book that carries a foreword by William A. Dembski. Um, and the second book, it, it, that lays out with a, a contextualizing essay, um, really in Wallace's own words, um, through the world of life, his view of intelligent evolution and intelligent design. Now, for a, a basic biography of Wallace, the Discovery Institute published a few years ago, um, Alfred Russell Wallace, A, a Rediscovered Wife. And that is uh, a biography of the life and times of Alfred Russell Wallace. And now with Nature's Prophet, it's a book that's really about Wallace's ideas and how idea, his ideas fit in um, with the developing science of the day and how Wallace re really became a rebel um, against uh, the movement of, of evolution towards uh, a materialistic uh, and reductionist viewpoint. So those three books will tell you all you need to know about Wallace well, for now. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, the book is Nature's Prophet. It is coming out. Oh, it is out. It is out. You can get it now. It's available uh, at discovery.org in our Discovery Bookstore, also on Amazon.com, of course. And it's by Michael Flannery. Thank you, Michael, for telling us a little bit about your books. Thank you, Rob.